We're going to talk about some more holiday stuff today and a very special category of clutter, which is both delightful and wonderful and can also feel like a big obligation and pile of to-dos that cause more and more problems as time goes on. And I'm talking about cards and contacts. So we get a Christmas card or a holiday card of some sort, and we keep it because it means it's usually pretty. <laughs> Let's be honest. Usually it's pretty. It's kind of funny. Maybe maybe it's very sentimental. Um, and it's designed for the holiday season. And we keep it. And then we display it during the holidays. And then we may feel obliged to return the favor and add that person to our list for next year or to shoot one off real fast right now. Um, but really, it doesn't have to be that way. It could be thought of as well-wishing and sharing and spreading the caring and the loving. And it might be just marketing and it might be a little bit of all those things, right? So there's some strings attached to holiday cards that aren't necessarily involved with other kinds of cards. Although I will say people that have a struggle with the holiday cards also have a struggle with all the birthday and other holiday cards. So think about it. What do the cards themselves represent? Is it the sharing and caring? Is it the love? Is it that people remember who you are? Is it other people's lives? Is it your window into what they're up to for comparison and not such great feelings? Where, what is your expectation for holiday cards? And apply that expectation when you send a card as well as when you receive a card. What are you going to not like the person anymore if you toss the card? Is the card from your insurance salesman the same weight as the card from your grandmother, right? Where do you draw the lines? And is a card that simply says love so-and-so or happy holidays the same as someone that took the time to write a handwritten note about a personal interaction or shared memory? And is it the same way as someone that sends, um, you know, a, a photograph of the family plus a newsletter of what they all did that year? Where, where are you going to draw the lines? And what is the intention of sending a card? I tend to think of it as sharing and caring. And it's the thought that counts. And it is lovely when I receive them. And I display them through the holiday season. And when I put away the holiday decor, the cards get put in the trash or recycle bin because it's time to clear the space for the next set of good intentions, right? So the other part of the holiday card situation is that it could be a rotation system, right? You could keep them for this year, let them go, bring in the new ones next year, etc. That's a rotation system. I love a good rotation system. But there's also the possibility of doing something completely different about cards. And this is the year to think it through. Um, I used to spend lots of time making handmade cards and sending them to my friends and family. But that was when I didn't live in the same town as them and I wanted to make sure they felt some love from me even though I wasn't there. Now that most of us live in the same town, it's not as important because I can actually see them in person and spend some time with them. So think about what it represents to you, how much time, effort, money, and storage you want to devote to it. Um, and all the answers are fine. The important part is you think through and don't apply different expectations to the cards you receive from the ones you send. So don't get upset if someone doesn't send a card. It doesn't necessarily mean they're not thinking of you. It may mean their life circumstances changed and they've decided they don't want to spend the time on that particular activity. It has nothing to do with you. When you send a card, it should be with love and um, given freely, regardless of reciprocity. Correct? Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing is the actual details in the card. The 
new contact information, the new address for someone or someone's new, the name of a new member of the family, um, that kind of thing. Those are details that need to go into your paperwork system, not your holiday system. So storing contact details with Christmas cards or holiday cards doesn't have the same effect as moving that contact information into your to enter area, which is what I talk about in, in the paper classes, um, because you need a place to store the pieces of paper with information you need to enter into a calendar, into an address book, into a spreadsheet, however you're going to keep track of the card addresses, whether it's family members or friends and updated details. Just know that you need to move that piece of the, the puzzle into the paperwork area and then set aside some time to actually update your information. Um, and then the third piece of the card clutter is typically the old cards that you kept from last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that that were designed to help you remember who to send cards to next year. So again, that becomes obligatory. They sent me a card, so I'm going to send them a card. And that may be where you decide to go with it. But if you haven't made that decision consciously, go ahead and let's turn it into how can I just keep track of the um, people I want to send the cards to and stay in contact to with. And how can I just go ahead and let go of those cards when I put the decor away? right? So some criteria for deciding which cards are extra special versus just a, a lovely note for the, the season, right? Um, I already mentioned if there's a handwritten note with a shared experience is a great thing. Um, it's not up to you, or I should say it's not your responsibility to keep the chronicle of someone else's life. It's important enough to keep your own, or it's hard enough to keep your own. Um, and so it, it depends on the level of acquaintance or friend or family and level of closeness and what's happening. Um, do you just need to make a couple notes so when you respond to them in an email or next time you get together, you have some, you remember to say a couple details about what you enjoyed in their newsletter? Or is it okay to just let it go? Like it's the thought that counts, literally the thought on a card. They're called greeting cards and holiday cards for a reason. It's the thought. Um, you're under no obligation to keep them forever. So I'm giving you permission to go ahead and let all the old ones. Now, some people like to recycle and upcycle and use parts of cards for next year, and that's fine. But know that that's your plan and have a plan for how to put it into a place where you'll be able to clip it, cut it, collage it, um, recreate for next year. Okay. It's also a great time to go ahead and note in your calendar for next year when you're going to do the cards. If you have to have a photo taken and send it in and wait for things to return, or you need to address cards and that kind of thing, make sure you go ahead and put some, some time on your schedule to do that in a timely manner ahead of time. So you are not surprised and last minute scrambling around to do it next time. All right, more details about discernment and um, using a rotation system can be found in the Declutter Masterclass and the Streamline Clutter Solution. And um, you can find those on the website, morethanorganized.net. Um, and I will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to like, follow, share, get on the list, like, share, follow. <laughs> Um, bottom line is we want more people to know about these ideas. So let's go ahead and, and share, share the love around. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.